Hello everybody and welcome! It's finally here, Kerbal Space Program 2 patch number 4, or to call it by its correct version number, 0.1.4.0. .0. 0. <laughs> Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? I'll refer to it as patch 4 in this video so that I don't sound too much like a robot reciting a technical manual. And before you ask, no, wobbly rockets still have not been fixed, but to be fair the developers never said that this patch would fix them. So what's the deal with this one then? It is probably the most delayed patch for KSP2, at least so far, which of course made people very curious what would finally be in it. Now we know, and the amount of bugs fixed with patch 4 is… less than half of what the previous one fixed. Hmm. But let's not grab the torches and pitchforks just yet. Bug quantity is not as significant as bug severity or the impact certain flaws have on playing the game. To find out what's the case here, we need a way to measure that. By cross-referencing the release notes that were published together with patch 4 and the list of highest ranked bugs. And when you look at that list, many of the bigger annoyances are now gone. You can finally grab a strut from the parts bin and then choose the symmetry you want to use it with. Up until patch 4 you had to do it up front, which was completely different from any other part and led to a lot of cursing here at Shadow Zone headquarters. In addition to that, we now have to the correct icons in the parts manager instead of the command pod icon everywhere. Makes navigating the thing a lot easier. Unfortunately, the action group manager still has the wrong icon everywhere. Which got me thinking, aren't they using some kind of object-oriented programming? And aren't the UI elements for like arrow, engine, ground, etc. some type of object or at least some kind of template or common component? Maybe somebody familiar with game development, especially with Unity, can enlighten me in the comments. Me coming from mostly web applications and fat clients, I'm used to having these types of things as some kind of common component that can be reused everywhere, which makes it more reliable in the sense that it will also look and behave the same wherever you use it. Ok, putting the excursion into development styles behind us, in general, patch 4 squashes a lot of smaller bugs that kept nagging players every time they wanted to build something, so that's going to be something that uh, you will definitely feel an improvement on when you are in the VAB. But there are also some changes that relate to flying the things you build in Kerbal Space Program 2. For instance, the air brakes that were added in a previous patch no longer react when rolling the vehicle, which is a good thing, but I still miss the option to have them react to specific control inputs like we were able to configure in KSP1. Staying on the ground for a while and in this rover, I want to highlight that finally the electric current indicator will go down when you consume electricity. Novel concept, I know. Just be aware that you will now actually need something that generates power on your journeys. Speaking of journey, let's go to space! No, not in this abomination of a thing that tries to be a spaceship from the upcoming game Starfield. I mean a rocket that actually works. Because something interesting happens when you switch the nav ball from surface to orbital mode. Or when the game switches it for you as soon as you exit the atmosphere. The nav ball will change colors. This, together with the different SES mode options and the small element explicitly telling you what mode you're in, should make it a lot easier to recognize in what stage of your journey you are. I know this is a concept the developers have thought about for quite a while, so it's interesting to see it appear in the actual game now. Personally, I'm not sure I'm a fan of the dark mode, if you can call it that, but I have heard from others that they quite like it. It might just be that I'm not used to it. What do you think about this change? Let me know in the comments down below. Or you can hop over on my Discord server, where we have a great community of like-minded fans of KSP and space enthusiasts. But the reason I went to space in this case here is to test something, because this was a bug that I reported way back in March, before the current reporting method via the forums was even established, and it concerns plane change maneuvers. Up until patch 4, when you wanted to do a bigger plane change, you couldn't rely on SAS and just set it to the maneuver marker. The reason for that was that the maneuver marker would drift away and change along with the other indicators. 
Now this works as it should, and as it does in KSP1 since quite a long time ago. Be that as it may, this will make traveling across the solar system a lot easier. What makes monitoring your space program a lot easier is that we now finally have the ability to rename vehicles from the tracking station. Select the craft you want to rename, click the name on the top right and name it Spacey Max Space Face or whatever you want to choose. I'm not going to go through all the stuff fixed with patch 4, but these are my personal highlights since all of them affected me and my enjoyment of the game, or in some cases lack thereof. So much for the good stuff, now let's move on to the not so good stuff. I already mentioned that the wobbly rocket situation is still the same, which was expected, but the developers also claim that they have improved the orbital decay bug where orbits around planets or moons would degrade and force the vehicles to either spend fuel to fix it constantly or to crash onto the surface. Well, I have to report that unfortunately in my case I can still provoke this issue. Here I set a probe around the moon in an orbit that would work fine in KSP-1. And as you can see, the periapsis is getting smaller, while the apoapsis is getting bigger at about 10 meters per second. That's not good and will keep quite a few people from playing KSP-2 regularly. Because if you can't rely on your satellites and probes staying in the orbit you put them in, what's the point of trying to build a big functioning space program? Something interesting I want to highlight is this comment that producer Nestor Gomez made on the forums. He said that the things we see in patch 4 are just a fifth of the actual work the team has been doing since the previous release. This means while there are just 80 fixes in this update, a lot of work went into the game overall, including upcoming features like science and re-entry heating and probably even colonies and interstellar. And we also have to acknowledge that apparently the orbital decay bug and the wobbly rocket stuff put the developers in front of additional challenges, so their time might be spent more on those two issues than on a hundred minor bug fixes or so. Me? I can still enjoy KSP2 even in its current state. Sure, my Starfield ship recreation is a far cry from the masterpiece that SW Dennis created in KSP1, but I can fool around here and fly some weird ships without too much problem. All of the footage here is not sped up in any way. Uh, what you see is how the game rendered it in 4040p and full details on my machine. The reason I'm telling you this is because there's some talk about some performance issues that are rare but for some configurations still present in patch 4, but so far they haven't hit me and I had a great smooth experience with the game. But what we all can do to help the game get better is to continue filing bug reports via the relevant KSP forum page. While the developers are probably aware of many of them already, having additional material and recreation steps will help them find solutions that are rock solid and make the game more enjoyable for all of us. At least that's the general hope around this. And while all of that is going on, I'm looking forward to the first feature update, which should finally, finally be given some science. I'm itching to try a Jewel 5 mission again, and without some science to bring back home, it's just half the fun. If this is something you would like to see, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to support a small space enthusiast video creator that doing what he loves, you can head over to Patreon or pick a YouTube channel membership. With the latter, you can even use special emoji that say again, or me in my funny Russian hat back when I did the Soviet space history series. Or you can just drop back in when YouTube dumps one of my videos in your recommendation feed. You do you. And you stay awesome. Like space. Space is awesome. And we should all strive to explore it together. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. 
Thanks for watching. Goodbye.